Very, and those purple envelopes, I'm telling you, people get very, very excited about them when you see them in the mail and they have hit mailboxes, so definitely be on the lookout for them. But if one of our friendly little elves did reach out to you, we encourage you to use their URL, their QR code. You can donate to their page. All the money, no matter how you donate, comes directly to the pantry to support our neighbors in need. Steve Sherlock here for Franklin Matters, Franklin Public Radio, anywhere, anytime on the internet, WFPR.FM, and in the local Franklin Mass FM radio dial, 102.9 on the FM band, here in the new Franklin Food Pantry conference room, community room, with a couple of key folks today. Tina Powderly, Executive Director, welcome. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. It is a good morning. You know, we're up. We're around, we're starting to do good stuff, you know, what can get better than that? <laughs> it is a great time of year in terms of giving back to the community. There's a big focus on it. And so for us, we see a lot of friends and supporters um, at this time of year that we might not see um, throughout the course of the year. So it is, it's a really fun time for us. Yes. And we have a special topic because the food elves have kind of morphed their program a little bit. So, Jen Johnson, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well. Good, good. Yes, the the Food Elves is now Pantry Elves. See, so we, that's part of that change. I'll it, have to change my lingo, yes, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so it is now Pantry Elves, and it has changed a little bit. Um, the, bulk of the, the bulk of the fundraiser is the same, but it is now called Pantry Elves. And instead of the students canvassing neighborhoods, everything is now done electronically. Ah, moving We're moving to with the, the times, yes. We're moving to the digital world. <laughs> We're moving to the digital world, yep. yes, yep. exactly. But in conjunction, because I did get this fancy purple envelope in the mail, right? Yes. So that was purposely yes. timed, right? Yes, care of our friends um, at Allegra who have always been huge supporters of our work here. Um, but we, as Jen was saying, we were trying to complement um, the historical program which as you know many folks know started really truly with two kids with very big hearts pushing their wagon through their Mm -hmm. um, community neighborhood collecting food and we did that and it grew and grew and grew for a number of years then we moved into the fund portion of the donation because we are really fortunate with our relationships with the greater boston food bank and some of our other partners Um, if we receive the dollar we can make it go a lot further Um, than if folks were to purchase, say, on their own, paying taxes and paying um, retail prices. So we sort of morphed, and then we received feedback from the community that some folks just weren't even receiving our friendly little elves through Mm -hmm. their neighborhoods. So you could imagine if you live in an apartment complex, There are certain spots in Franklin that were just not within your realm to reach. Just not within our realm. And we moved into this building, and we have just seen a huge outpouring of folks who want to support so this really helped us meet that desire as well because you'll either get a friendly little elf um, or you'll get um, a beautiful purple envelope right or both or Or both both. (laughs) and those purple envelopes i'm telling you people get very very excited about them when you see them in the mail and they have hit mailboxes so definitely be on the lookout for them but if one of our friendly little elves did reach out to you we encourage you to use their URL, their QR code, you can donate to their page. All the money, no matter how you donate, comes directly to the pantry to support our neighbors in need. Right. So no matter how you'd like to do it, that's up to you. But uh, the purple envelopes are out there. They're very popular. Galaxy Grape, <laughs> um, as Tina mentioned with um, Allegra, we're really appreciative of that. Yeah. So in terms of the morphing, we can step back. So you referenced, Tina referenced the uh, two individuals. I believe it was Lisa Piana's children yes, at correct. once a point in time. Yes. Franklin Downtown Partnership mm-hmm. person who 12 days of giving. Yes. And then it morphed more into maybe de-emphasizing the 12 days, but still doing the food drive. But now it's changing again. Right, it's changing again, so it's still middle and high school students, or we alumni are welcome as well. If you're in college and you'd still like to participate, we welcome you to join us. But as middle and high school students, and you can go to our website, franklinfoodpantry.org, look under the happening now, and the Pantry Elves information is right there to sign up. Right. Registration is open till December 2nd. December 2nd. Yes, so December 2nd. It is 2nd. coming upon us. I mean, we're almost it, at Thanksgiving, I and know. it's going to be it's right there. It's happening. It's happening. 
Yes, and then we asked this, the kids to set up their own crowdfunding page, which all the instructions are in their fancy uh, Pantry Elves toolkit that they mm-hmm. receive. So after they register, they get the Pantry Elves toolkit link. All the information is on there. It's super, super easy. My son is uh, a middle school. He signed up. He did it in a matter of minutes. Very easy, very user-friendly, um, not intimidating at all. All the instructions are in the toolkit. You set up your crowdfunding page, and then you can share that link with your family and friends. And you can do so via text, social media, email, however you choose. Mm -hmm. There's also a template in the toolkit for text and email. If you're not quite sure. Exactly. What do I say? How do I do this? Right. How do I go about this? We included a template for you as well, including lots of information about the pantry. Mm -hmm. So you have all the tools you need right there to go out and start your fundraising. Right. So creating some mini ambassadors, if you will, who can say, hey, this is happening. Can you help us? And if somebody comes back with a question, they may be able to answer it because of the info provided. But if not, there are resources behind that. As exactly. Well. Yes, we have a um, FAQ section as well with all information about the pantry, and then our information, our email is on there as well. So if there is a question that they can't answer, definitely can reach out. Also, information if they do want to collect food as well, they can set up their own food drive. Our food drives have been down, right. so there's also information on there as well. If these kids say, "Hey, you know what? I, I want to do something else as well," mm-hmm. set up a neighborhood food drive. All the information is on there, and that's very easy to set up. Yeah. And then the only other key piece from other conversations I know, because by way of disclosure, certainly at some point in time in the past, (laughs) wasn't that long ago, it seems, um, I was on the board and I've continued to support the pantry in addition to the radio stuff by working on two committees. So I'm familiar with kind of the inner workings to that extent. As part of the food drive, one of the things that you would recommend doesn't actually require, but depending upon the size of the food drive, you certainly recommend prior notification so that when the food comes in the pantry is prepared for it yes exactly that's why we do ask if you are going to uh, to host a food drive to fill out the form so that way we we know it's coming Mm -hmm. and that way we can schedule time for you to drop it off when it's not food truck you know food delivery and we have some time to take in your donations and weigh them properly um, we do ask you to fill out the form and also there's a link to our current needs and our high priority needs right. which is really important because that does change often and we keep that updated so if you want to reference our high priority and current needs you can let those know this is the items we are looking for that would help the pantry most at this time right yeah, because depending upon the time of year, it may be paper goods or feminine products. It may be cereal. It may be peanut butter, coffee. I mean, there's a variety of needs that all of a sudden just kind of like pop. You've got a crush. Uh, and maybe a delivery doesn't come in on time. So you've got a gap on the shelf. Correct. and You want to create that full shopping experience. Yeah, we do. Um, just to give folks a little bit of a, a window into what happens here, it's surprisingly complicated. Mm. And one of the pieces that Jen um, and our development director, Marsha, and the whole team have worked really hard on is bringing the pantry elves into the fold on that. So we do have tours for the pantry elves to come in. The first one filled up very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that will help um, connect what pantry elves are doing with the impact on the community because that's really what it's all about it's not just about the food in the door and the money it's about that this translates to food on the table of folks who need it Mm -hmm. um so when you come in this building and you see how many moving pieces there are to it then you begin to understand how important it is to register food drive so we know that we have volunteers here to receive it and process it every single item needs to be date checked cataloged, stored properly so that we get the, the stuff that's going to expire first out first. It's, it's a pretty mm-hmm. complex maneuver. And when you layer that into the thousands of pounds we pick up from Greater Boston Food Bank or the thousands of pounds we receive from our, few, our food recovery partner, right. Love and Spoonfuls, and then the great community that's always supporting us, it can get, it can get pretty hectic. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a wonderful problem to have, but it does help us um, to have folks... Uh, pre-register and we encourage folks to sign up for the tours if you're a pantry elf or we have public tours that are available on our website which is a great way to learn more about what we do and and get a first-hand glimpse into how we do it have shared that from time to time i'll continue to do so because there's still some you know clearly from the new building it was edwin's for those who hadn't heard 
it changed color and all of a sudden, whoa, <laughs> it's here, <laughs> right. look at it. <laughs> but there's still some misinformation out there where people just really don't understand. I mean, we're not, we're grant funded and community supported. There's no other significant, you know, major dollar pipeline. It's, it's truly individual contributors and a few grants here and there for the solar panels, certain aspects of the building, you had a building campaign, but it still takes money to do the support. It is 100% elbow grease. Um, there is no, there's absolutely no charge for any services that anyone receives here. So there's not a membership fee that we can count on. Um, so we really 100% rely on the philanthropy of our community and the generosity of our community, which can be children doing food drives and doing pantry elves to corporations making larger donations. Mm -hmm. We have groups that come in um, that we put really to hard work, <laughs> which is wonderful. And of course, our 400 plus volunteers. If you were to monetize the um, amount of work provided by the volunteers over the course of the year. It's in our um, infographic, but it's over half a million dollars. It's it's absolutely incredible. So um, really, it, it takes a whole team, but it is true that individual donations, corporate donations, um, and the grants that we work really hard to um, um, secure that's it. So every year it's a new um, opportunity to bring so, people into our fold to learn about what we do. It's a new challenge, a new opportunity. And as a nonprofit, clearly you've got a minimum amount of expense, clearly for you know the bits of staff that you do have, yourself included, of course. But then everything else goes back to the community. And interestingly enough, if you, again, are in a report, I'll tease it a little bit. It should be ready to drop mm -hmm. any day now. Um, when you look at our financials, almost 90% of a dollar goes directly to um, our client program. So most of the staff we have here is actually touching food, raising way. funds yeah. that are, are buying food. So that is very, very direct. Our quote unquote overhead is minimal, but I also would like to turn it a little bit on its head. It's very necessary. You would never expect any other $1 million business to not pay for um, computers that can get the job done sure. or yep. the infrastructure you need or the lights. So there is an amount of um, infrastructure you need to mm -hmm. pull off an operation this size. So we're very proud that we, um, have a community that supports us with a lot of in-kind donations, um, which allows us to keep those costs um, manageable and sure. low. Um, so our goal always, of course, is to get the most food into the most hands mm -hmm. of people. But you also, in order to do that, need the people on the ground to do the work. And also, um, people on the ground is really what the food pantry is about here. Mm -hmm. Compassion, um, dignity, empathy, they're really core values for us. And um, that you can see in the hearts and the eyes of the volunteers and the staff here. So yeah, it makes a difference there. We'll have to do a separate podcast on just some of the stories because mm. every time I hear a story, it's just <laughs> we amazing. usually yes. make you choke up a little yes. bit. <laughs> we do. It's, it's we so don't amazing. get through many meetings here without someone crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just yeah. that's what the pantry is. And then while going back to the elves in particular, the pantry elves. I'm learning the new term, <laughs> the pantry elves. Uh, clearly, they're going digital in their social circles to share and effectively get the financial support of a dollar, more dollars, whatever makes sense. But then that pipeline helps facilitate so that in case there's some shortages and the food drives haven't come in or the loving spoonfuls haven't brought in certain items, then the financial flexibility, you can then go buy it. Right, exactly. Like Tina said, that our dollar can go much further than if you were to buy, you know, cereal. Look, for example, you know, we keep running low on cereal. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. and that explains why we're running low on cereal. And sure. it's ex it's expensive for you to go to the store to buy to donate. It's expensive to, for us to buy, but our dollar will go further. So that's why these financial donations are very, very important. And you know, I think it's great. Pantry Elves has a special place in my heart because you know I have two kids, and I think it's it's such a great way to introduce 
the youngest residents of Franklin mm-hmm. to how to give back and how to make a difference in your community. Right. And we have, you know, we give out weekend backpacks to 120 students per week. That's these kids' peers, you sure. know, and I think that is very relatable for these kids. Yep. Um, it's not something that's just out there. It's real. It's happening in your town. Mm-hmm. And it's a great way to get them involved at a young age. And then they can come in and tour the pantry and think, wow, you know what? I, I want to volunteer here. Maybe I'll sign up for a future event and I can come in and do some hands-on work. And that's why I think it's really special. And, you know, we tell these these kids who sign up, every dollar you raise makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And it's going to make the holidays better and brighter right. for your neighbors. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's part of the, not just the awareness to raise the money, but the awareness that this issue, food insecurity, it exists. As, as quote, quality as Franklin is, there is a gap in our population where, I think you've had stats where even with the SNAP benefits that people are entitled to, there's still some folks that are not yet utilizing this as a service as part of that. Oh, 100%, Steve. I mean, the reason the board a decade ago um, on the Franklin Food Pantry decided that we wanted a bigger, more permanent space is we knew, you know, the technical term for that is SNAP gap, but basically we knew we weren't reaching all the folks Mm -hmm. um, that we could possibly help. Then, who knew that there would be a pandemic, that certain you know world events would occur that would cause a lot of economic stress. So we're seeing folks who we haven't seen in years come mm-hmm. back to us. Sure. There's a lot of people who are working two jobs where this just is just enough to help give them a little bit of breathing room. Um, there's not really one sort of typical story, but our numbers have gone up and it's a function of being here in this beautiful space where it's just bigger so mm-hmm. we can see more people. But again, we've made some investments in infrastructure that have allowed us to realize some efficiencies. So we've been able to increase the number of people we can see in an hour, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, to a large, large degree. And um, it's easier to find us. We're yep. very prominent. We're very yep. proud of the fact that Franklin believes that um, a social service like this, just like a senior center or other agencies, deserves to be sort of front and center on mm-hmm. a state highway where folks know where to come if, if they need it. So we are lucky that we have the support of the community and the resources and the building all to come together to meet this increased need. All of our numbers, no matter how you cut them, um, sadly are going up so our work isn't done and that's one of the reasons we rely on the pantry elves. it's our largest fundraiser um, so it's really really critical to us for for this to be successful it sets the stage for the rest of our our programs for mm-hmm. the rest of the year right because you do have a few key events and by the time this airs food the turkey trot may either be happening or just <laughs> happening about to happen or right. have happened but yeah, that's one key one, uh, but this certainly, as you said, is the largest, so yes. All goodness. To, to reemphasize some points you mentioned earlier, so folks can go to the Food Pantry page, find current events, and look for fr- Food Pantry Elves. Pantry, I know, it's, it's tricky, Steve. <laughs> We've been covering this for many, many years. It's always been Food Elves, and I still catch myself saying right. Food Elves. But yes, franklinfoodpantry.org. And on the landing page, it's happening now, is at the bottom, and you click on Pantry Elves, and there you'll get all your information. It's a Google form to sign up, super simple. Um, As soon as that goes through, you'll get an email with the link to the Pantry Elves Toolkit with all your information on how to set up your crowdfunding page and those other um, tidbits we talked about, the template, the FAQs. Mm -hmm. Um, There's also, there's also a flyer template on there as well too, because we did hear from um, some folks that said, well, I have friends, family that I want to share this with, but I don't really have their email or right. I don't have their yeah. cell phone number. Yeah. You know, maybe it's it's <clears throat> the gentleman across the street that you've you know mm-hmm. looked across the street for for years and you yeah. just want to hand him something. So there is a flyer template on there as well yeah. um, in those situations. And you can just put your URL or QR code 
on there and hand it to your friend or family or neighbor. Right. Um, all the information is there and sign up. It goes till December 2nd, which is a Monday. So if you want to sign up through the 2nd and then you can fundraise for the entire month of December. And the students who do um, participate and volunteer their time do receive 12 community service hours. That's right. We forgot to mention that. Yes. Which is community important. Community service hours, at least for the high school students, I believe, are really required. It's it, it, Yes, it, it, I think it is at that level. Um, and, you know, it's important to at the middle school start now you know start right. getting involved with your community and earning those hours and you know we we really appreciate the time these kids are taking to fundraise and mm -hmm. for that you get those 12 community service hours yeah and i think the flyer goes back to kind of the coincidence uh deliberate in terms of deliver delivering the uh purple envelope right because in a digital world there are some people who are not on the digital world right. and you still need to have that print campaign in some ways to help the, the letter will also say oh pantry elves are happening <laughs> contribute right. etc so yes. yes we recognize that everybody has sort of different ways they like to give or comfort levels and how they give so hopefully we're making this easy for for everyone to participate good well thanks for spending some time we'll include in the show notes the link so they'll be able to get some more about it uh, that way, if they want to contribute in other ways, take a tour, sign up as a volunteer, contribute either monthly or one time, you've got open options on that, including a recall uh, Amazon wish list. Yes. So you can do that. Mm -hmm. And again, that ties, if I recall, to some of the current needs as well. So that's updated on a regular basis. Yes, it is. And it makes it super, super easy. You know, you might not have time to run to the store to pick up a donation and drop it off. So this is very easy. You just go on the Amazon wish list and it's delivered right to us here at the pantry. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, thank you for taking time today to share this. Hopefully the folks will say, oh, yeah, Pantry House, I heard about that. Let me do something. So. You'll see that bright purple envelope, and you'll know it's the pantry. So, Steve, thank you, as always, for supporting our mission and all you do um, in front of um, and behind the scenes for the people of Franklin. No, oh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We do this because Franklin matters. We are now producing this in collaboration with Franklin TV and Franklin Public Radio. This podcast is my public service effort for Franklin, but we can't do it alone. We can always use your help. How can you help? If you can use the information that you find here, please tell your friends and neighbors. If you don't like something here, please let me know. Through this feedback loop, we can continue to make improvements. And I thank you for listening. For additional information, please visit franklinmatters.org. If you have questions or comments, you can reach me directly at suresteve at gmail.com. The music for the intro and exit was provided by Michael Clark and the group East of Shirley. The piece is titled Ernesto Manana, copyright Michael Clark and Tin Type Tunes in 2008, and used with their permission. I hope you enjoy. By the way, you can also subscribe and listen to Franklin Matters Radio on your favorite podcast app. Search in podcasts for Franklin Matters. <laughs>